Hey everyone, thanks for joining me on our YouTube channel today. I'm Star. If you're new here or you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel and helping us feed a hungry hippo. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up as you're listening to what I have to say, or you can hit the thumbs down either way. Helps us out. Um, also, join our Facebook group, Flippin' Hippos Reseller Pod. There's a link down below for that. So today we're going to talk about how much Keith and I actually work in a day and how we run our volume based business. I get a lot of comments, questions, emails all the time of assumptions that we're burning the candle at both ends. When you run a volume based business, it's constant churn and burn that you have to work yourself to death. Um, and that it's quite the contrary. If you've been here for any length of time, you know that I'm a constant supporter of work-life balance. You can't work all the time and be mentally healthy or a happy person unless you really like working. But still, I, even if you really like working and you're a workaholic, it's still probably not healthy to work all the time. And well, the other side of that is you clearly can't just goof off all the time and lay around and watch movies or you're never going to make money. You have to have a good balance. And I am a huge supporter of that. I always talk about it. I talk about taking time for yourself um, to do pursue interests of yours, hobbies. I talk about spending time with your family, your friends, your pets. It's super important. And no one should be working themselves to the bone. The only time you should really have to put in what most entrepreneurs or small business owners will tell you is the life of 12 hour days, six days a week. When you're first building your business, absolutely. If you have a brick and mortar, maybe. But if you're building an online reseller business in the beginning, you will have to put in a lot of hours and you will have to work extra days, six days a week, seven days a week. But that's because you're building the business. And if you apply yourself and you do it well and you work hard, you don't have to do that for very long until you get your business built up to the level you want it to be. And then you can back off because now you're maintaining. Um, I don't think that you should ever stop growing, but there comes a time when you don't have to grind it out as hard. When you're starting brand new with zero listings versus I have 2,000 and I want to grow to 5,000, you know, you can work a little bit extra. Um, but I don't think there's just this misconception. And I did another video um, on my unpopular reseller series about how you don't really have to work all the time to be successful. And this kind of falls in line with that, except it's going to be more personal. If you haven't seen that one, I'll have it pop up at the end and you can watch it. This one, we're going to more talk about how Keith and I run the, uh, our business, how much we actually work and what we do when we're working. I mentioned in my live show last week, I think a lot of the reason why Keith and I don't have to work such long hours is because when we work, we're working. So we are focused, we have good processes in place, and when we're working, we're doing a lot of work. I think that in an hour's time, I can probably do what most people do in two or three, just because I set myself up for success. I do things in a certain order. I have processes in place that make things easier and more productive, and I focus, and I don't get distracted. So... Um, I should preface also this video by saying, yes, I understand that there are two of us. A lot of folks will point that out too. Like, um, if Keith and I only work six to eight hour days, that's two people working. So technically you're getting 12 to 16 man hours of work done in a day. I understand that. And so if you were just one person, you would say, well, I would need to work 12 to 16 hour days to get done what you and Keith get done. However, most resellers aren't doing everything that we do. I have this YouTube channel that I record and edit videos for. I have to answer comments. I spend a lot of time um, answering questions in my emails, comments on Facebook, Instagram. There's a lot of time I spend on social media for actual work, not just to fart around and watch TikToks, but... Um, I do spend a lot of time answering comments, emails, 
recording reels and videos and editing all of that, doing stories on Instagram. But a lot of resellers, most resellers don't have a social media platform. And if you do, um, you got to find the balance. But a lot of what I do in a day is all of that. So if you were just a reseller and you really wanted to crank out a volume based business, you could do it on your own and work eight, maybe 10 hours a day. And then you could back off once you build it up. Um, 10 to 12 in the beginning. So I do agree that you have to work long hours and probably on the weekends when you're first building, because you've got to get the momentum going. Um, you've got to get the listings up to start making the money. Um, but then you can back off and just kind of maintain unless you want to constantly grow, but make sure that you are balancing it so that you're taking time off. So Keith and I don't work <clears throat> 12, 14 hour days. We don't. Yes. Like I said, there's two of us, but a lot of what I do is social media. If you took that out of the picture, um, we would actually probably have a lot more listings up and be way more volume and, and maybe be even more scaled up than we are. So we work six to eight hours a day, Monday through Friday. And then on Sundays we thrift. So I technically guess that we work six days a week because we do thrift on Sundays. However, the way that we thrift takes two hours, three hours tops. So then we have the rest of our Sunday. So let's talk a little bit <clears throat> about our processes. We don't thrift every day. We go out on Wednesdays and we go out on Sundays. And we are in and out in under an hour in each store. Again, folks are going to say, well, there's two of you. I understand that. So if you are thrifting on your own, it might take you a couple hours. You may want to dedicate one whole day to it. Um, my friend Dan, Flippin' Daddy, I know he goes to the bins once a week and it's like a whole day process. You guys know Trish, my friend Trish. She goes to the bins once a month because it's quite a drive for her to another state and she'll make a whole day of it. Robert will go to Vegas to the bins and make a whole weekend of it. Um, but you don't have to go thrifting every day. A lot of resellers like to because new stuff is put out. And it also depends on what you're reselling. If you do like hard goods and stuff like that, I guess going out more often makes more sense because you're not buying in huge volume. But if you're a clothing reseller and you go to the bins or you hit half off for 99 cent days um, and you have to make a whole day or half a day out of it, um, great. But don't do that every day. Just do it to get enough inventory that you have enough to list each week and maybe a little bit extra to set aside so you have a just-in-case pile or a death pile. So we go on Wednesdays and Sundays, and we go first day. So uh, Salvation Army and Goodwill here both open at 10 a.m. So we are out the door by 9.45. On Sundays, that's a little bit easier because there's no shipping or anything. We just get up get ready for the day, eat breakfast and go. Wednesdays, we have to get up a little bit earlier um, so that we have time to take showers, get ready, do shipping and still be out the door. Some Sometimes on Wednesdays, it's 10, 10, 15 till we're out the door if there's more shipping to do, which is fine. Um, but we get to the stores right when they open and then we focus. And we are kind of niche down, so that helps as well. Um, I'm not, I'm looking at the plush when I go to the thrift. I look at them, but most of the plush here is now $2.99 and up, and it's just not worth that cost of goods. Um, plush, you should try to keep your cost of goods low. And so in the summertime, I'll be definitely going to church sales and yard sales and just finding um, a lot of it and offering you know, I'll give you all uh, 10 bucks for all of it or whatever. That's what I typically used to do here. Just in the summertime, I would I would find yard sales or churches that had a lot of plush out and offer a price for all of it. And then I do have a wholesale, um, a couple of wholesale connections for plush. So that's how I'm going to be getting my plush because I want it to be a dollar or less for cost of goods. Unless it's something really good, which is why I still look when I'm at the thrift. I eyeball it. Of course, if I saw like a hidden Mickey Duffy bear and it was eight bucks, I'm going to buy it. But I eyeball that. 
but then I just focus on the jeans and I go through them very quickly. This also comes with time. So you're going to find that when you're thrifting in the beginning and you're new, you're going to be slower because you're still learning brands. You're still learning uh, what your cost of goods point should be on the different brands based on what they sell for. So you're still learning comps and you're not, you're going to take a little bit longer to look the items over, but this just comes with time and experience, you know, five, six years down the road. If you're still a reseller, you can pretty much just flip through the racks really quick, know what brands are good, know your price points on most of them. Um, and then you get to where you can just look really quick for the, I do this with the jeans because you always want to look in the crotch. But um, if you go into a store and you focus, I think you're quicker. Obviously, time and experience makes you quicker. But don't be all over the place. Like have a plan. Um, find out what. If you want to niche down, that's fine. I don't recommend niching down to like just one thing. Like we do remotes, men's shirts, scrubs, jeans, plush. We look at a lot of different things. But learn the layout of your thrift store and go to what you like first. If you really like to do shoes, beeline for the shoes and then go to the hard goods or then go to the jeans. Um, but make your trip make sense. Think about like when you're in the grocery store, when you have a list, if you're zigzagging all over the store, it takes longer than if you know what what's in what aisle and how to write your list and order the store, if that makes sense. So we do thrift twice a week. Um, and on Wednesdays, we also grocery shop, but we're still home by 1230 or one o'clock. We go to the Salvation Army. We usually get about a hundred items there. And then we will get our groceries. We will run any other errands that we have to do that day. Go to the post office if we need a haircut. Um, anything else that we have to do. But we're still usually home by 1, 1.30. We'll eat lunch. And then we get to work. And then we work till 5. We usually quit at 5 every day, by the way. So how do we go thrifting only twice a week? Continue to list every day. Do all the social media that I do. And... Right now, we're also working on our three guides for 2023, and I'm doing an inventory overhaul, which means I'm going through each and every single bin of clothing and double checking that it's all still listed and in the right place because we have really good processes. So part of that process is going thrifting only twice a week and getting as much as we can while we're there. Keith has a system in place where he um, does the laundry and... He has it like built into his schedule. Um, so he starts it, eats breakfast, goes down, flips it to the, to the dryer, lists a little bit. He has it like worked out for him that it works. And then um, when we list, we're listing from list perfectly catalog. So I do have to give a super big shout out and thank you to list perfectly because honestly, without list perfectly, um, our business model wouldn't be what it is. We wouldn't be as productive as we are and our processes would not be as simple as they are. List perfectly has been the best thing we have ever done for our business. We use their pro plan. It comes out to like $2 and 30 cents a day. And it is the best $2 and 30 cents a day I have ever spent in my life. You can use our code flip and hippos to try list perfectly for 30% off of your first month. Or if you are on a lower plan, than the pro and you want to try pro, you can upgrade for 30% off the first month with flipping hippos. The reason I'm promoting that and pushing it is because when I talk about our processes, I have to give thanks. I have to give credit where credit is due. Without List Perfectly, we would not be able to be as productive as we are and have these great processes in place. So I take photos in batches and I usually spend an afternoon after lunch, taking photos one or two days a week. Our mornings are spent sh doing the shipping, doing listing, but our listing is already done for us. And I'll, I'll get to that when I talk about our processes. When I do my listing, I already have stuff ready to go in my catalog and I'm just pushing it out to the different platforms. So that takes just a few minutes. And then I'm sending out offers and, and doing say, setting up the sales and answering comments and questions and all of that. And then after lunch, usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'll spend from one to five taking pictures. 
Yes, four hours I take pictures um, because I want as many as I can have in my Elvis Perfectly catalog waiting for me. That also clears up our death pile. It gets our inventory more organized because instead of stuff just sitting and waiting, it's photographed, it's measured, it's processed, it's in a bag, it's in its bin, it has a skew, which is all saved on those perfectly. And everything stays neat and organized and it's, you know, new stuff is coming in, it's being washed and dried, it's being folded into boxes, uh, boxes are being brought up to the office, boxes of jeans, boxes of men's shirts or women's shirts is all separated. And then that's being photographed. And those items are individually being put into the bins in the garage in their locations. So that's part of our process um, is just having these huge fo fo photographic photography sessions. There you go. Keith does his on Mondays and Fridays. He does lots of shirts. So I take my photos on my phone right in list perfectly. And I have templates set up there for jeans and plush and women's shirts, everything that we everything that we list most commonly, we have a template for. When I go to take my photos, you can go into list perfectly and set a default template. So if I'm working on a batch of jeans, I set my template default to jeans. And every pair of jeans I photograph is actually being saved as a listing already in list perfectly. So then when I'm going down to list, when I'm sitting down to list, I've already got a listing. Most of the stuff is already filled in because it's jeans and I have a template and it makes that process faster. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. I'm going to share my screen. But um, so I take all the photos Tuesdays and Thursdays. I take tons. I sit for four hours a day and just get all these photos in the back end of list perfectly. Then usually on Monday afternoons, I create listings for four hours after lunch. So Monday mornings, shipping takes a little bit longer because you have more sales from over the weekend. I also try to do my what sold on eBay video before lunch and get that out of the way. And then after lunch, I will sit for four or five hours and go into my list perfectly catalog. All those pictures I took, I sit and get them ready. I don't push them out to any platforms yet. I'm just filling in the title, removing the backgrounds, filling in the measurements, and getting the prices in and everything. And now they're ready to list. And so then every single morning, except for Wednesdays, I do it when we get back from uh, thrifting and grocery shopping. I do it in the afternoon on Wednesday. But every other morning after shipping is done, first thing, I can go into my catalog. I can sort by not on eBay, not sold, and it only shows me any listings I have um, that aren't on eBay. And you can sort them by price because I like my most expensive stuff to go up first. So all those listings that I have ready are there and I can just grab five or 10 real quick and push them out on five platforms with a few clicks of a button. And so that is why I say List Perfectly is probably the biggest part of our processes that make us so productive and really allow us to have these processes in place that make us productive, um, get more work done and be more organized. Um, Cause I know every Monday afternoon, I'm going to sit for four hours and create listings. But then I know that every morning, even on the weekends, I got stuff ready to go. All I have to do is select it in bulk and push it out on five platforms. That's all I have to do. Um, and then Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm taking pictures. And this is all um, what I usually do, but it's not set in stone. So if I needed to take an afternoon, we're getting closer to the end of the year. Our guides really need to be done. So if I need to take a Thursday, which I did yesterday and say, today I'm not taking pictures. I'm going to spend my Thursday doing my guides. That's okay because all those other weeks I took those extra pictures. I have extra pictures in place. Um, the only thing I try not to skip is the Monday of sitting down and getting listings ready because I like to have those ready. When it's time for me to actually list on platforms, I like to just click 10 items and tell this perfectly which platforms I want it on and then fill in whatever I need to and go from there. So that is how Keith and I stay so productive. Those are the processes that we have. 
And it's important for you to find processes that work for you. You don't have to emulate our model. You don't have to be exactly like us. I can just tell you what works for us and what I recommend you doing. I do recommend you doing everything in batches. So you should be taking all your photos, then doing all your listing. Um, don't try to thrift every day. Don't try to, to take one item and photograph it, measure it, and list it. Do all your photos. And try to do things that are alike. Do all the jeans, do all the shirts, do all the shoes. These are things that can help speed you up and um, get you being more productive and doing things at a more quick rate. Um, also, have routines in place, be organized. And I mean, if you want to emulate what we do, I really think it it's very productive what we do. We get a lot done in a very little time. Um, the processes that we have in place allow us to work hard when we work, but we take off Saturdays completely. We take off most of Sunday um, and we quit by five o'clock every day on Fridays. Um, we used to quit around four, four thirty, just because it was Friday. We cut out early, but now I do my Friday hangouts from four to five on live on the channel. But we have a lot of time to do things in life that isn't work because when we are working, we're getting so, so, so much done. So, you know, this is what works for us. Just having a lot of extra photos in the catalog and then having a lot of listings ready to go in the catalog and then just pushing them out and then being mindful when we're at the thrift to just stay focused. And when you're working on something, just, you know, get rid of distractions and work on that. Um, I'm going to show you my screen. I'm just going to show you real quick what it looks like in List Perfectly when um, I have pictures. So you can see not sold, not on eBay. Um, I don't have these sorted by price, so they're kind of all over the place right now. You've got some up here that have prices and some that don't. I said I'm doing my inventory right now so this is a mistake i found these are not in u17 i don't know where they are i need to find them um i guess when i ended it i forgot to mark off grailed let's do that while we're here just take it off of grailed okay so you can see i have some ready to go these will get pushed out um but you can sort by price you can push your price up here and it'll go lowest to highest. And if you push it a second time, it'll go highest to lowest. I usually just push it once and then scroll all the way to the bottom and get um, my listings done that way. Um, so this is what it looks like when they're just sitting here waiting for you. These are Keith's shirts. I got some jeans. So I set my default template to jeans and then I just start taking pictures of jeans. Then when I sit down on Monday to list, I uh, right click, open a link in new tab. That way this stays um, the way I want it. If you open these and edit them, uh, this is what pops back up. So if you have them sorted by not sold, not eBay, and you're working through them and you edit straight in here, as soon as you edit your listing, list perfectly pops up to um, most recently edited here. So I don't want to do that. I just right click and then work on them. So this is what it looks like, right? And this is how in like four hours I can get 50 or 60 ready to go for the next week. I have my sizes and measurements right there and I can just fill them in. I can just look right there, fill them in. Right, just like this. And once I get my measurements in, I usually go up here to bulk, remove backgrounds. And while that's thinking, I look here, I see that this is going to have to go in a priority envelope, flat rate, and the location is B91. So I would confirm. And while that's thinking and removing the backgrounds, I go down to my skew line, I put B91. Um, these are going to go out for about 25. I might comp them because I haven't had this brand in a long time, 
most brands that I do list, which also helps my processes, but this will also come with experience for you as you do this more. A lot of times you're going to run into the same brands um, and just be able to know what to price them at. But even if you had the comp, you can do it very quickly. Um, put your skew line in, make sure your weight is correct. If these were first class jeans, my template is defaulted to two pounds because most jeans are going to be two pounds and go in a padded flat or a priority flat rate envelope. I still call them padded flats. We don't use those anymore. Um, so it does default to two. But if this were first class, then I would just come down and, you know, 15 or whatever. Um, and if I had to comp, this is where I would comp. I would have a whole other tab open over here with eBay and just do it real quick. Or you can do it on your phone. You don't even, you can stay on this screen and just comp on your phone real quick and then plug it in. I usually put the month, the year, and I still use my padded flat code. So we've always put PF in this key line if it was a padded flat. Um, just so we know when we're doing offers because we do free shipping. And then I always start myself 25% higher than I want it on eBay. So it'll be 20% off. Um, those again, with time, I've just memorized what it is for most prices, what's a market. And then I could put in, these are plus size jeans, um, Blaine Bryant brand, and they are, they look boot cut, but they also kind of look straight leggy. Uh, leggy openings 19, they are plus size, which can make a difference. Um, I'm going to put boot cut, and I would put boot cut. And of course, when I'm not talking... <laughs> my way through this i'm going much faster i can do these so quickly i'm going to flip this around um i do create two extra clicks for myself um when i'm listing i sometimes i delete these here this one i leave this one so when i push this out on the other platforms i will have to delete this picture on each one before i list it which is an extra click but it's worth saving yourself the nightmare and the headache if they get misplaced and you can't find them when they sell. You can go back into your list perfectly catalog and see where the location is. Things happen. Sometimes you set them down on top of a bin and they fall behind. Sometimes somebody uh, puts them in the wrong bin. Sometimes the paper clip is, you know, over the letter and number. I mean, any number of things can happen that something can get misplaced. And I don't want to play Sherlock Holmes and be a detective and go through like 90 bins of clothing when I can't find something. And I really don't want to have to cancel an order. So I leave this here, but I do delete it out of the listings. But that's basically my process. I go in, I have all these pictures taken um, from my photo days. There's just so they're just loaded in here. And when I open them up, they're already in my jeans template. So what I'm doing is filling in my measurements and removing the backgrounds. And while that's thinking, I can fill in my skew line, comp if I need to, and then um, come up, make sure they look good. And then I would fill in my title real quick. Um, I put the brand. I don't have my glasses on, but there we go. Venetia jeans, women's size. 18 and I might even put plus size and then I put what um, the jeans are skinny boot cut whatever a lot of the jeans I do have this on the tag so that would actually go up front if these were Levi's 524 boot cut on the tag here I would put Levi's 524 boot cut jeans then women's size but anyway I just fill that in um, copy paste the title down here and then I fill in the brand. I put cotton blend here. I put the size and um, done because I've already got everything else filled in because it's a template. And then I would update it like this. And then it will save to my catalog. Like you saw these ones up here. And when I'm ready to list in the morning and I just want to quickly push some out, I can select them. Intel was perfectly where I want to list them to, and they will all get listed. So that's our processes. And again, I really have to thank List Perfectly so, so much. Um, 
because I can sit for four hours and just take pictures and then go to my catalog for four hours and just prep the listings. And then each morning spend 10 minutes pushing five out, 15 minutes pushing 10 out across five platforms. Um, but yeah, we have our routines in place in the morning. We have a, a morning routine. You know, we get up, we get ready, we do shipping, we eat breakfast, we push out listings. Um, we do pictures on certain days. We do thrifting on certain days. Um, and by sticking to those routines and um, we've got to be a little flexible. Like I said, there's sometimes, because I have two days where I do photography. One, one of those days I can say, no, I need to work on my guides. No, I'm really behind on editing videos. I'm really behind on going through the bins or whatever. I do take Friday and film. So that's why a lot of times you'll see videos come out that were like from weeks ago or whatever. Um, Cause I do after breakfast before lunch on Fridays, I film three or four videos and then just have them uploaded to my computer. And when I have time, I can edit them and, and upload them to YouTube with thumbnails and then push those out. I try to do one a day. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know in the comments. And again, if you want to try this perfectly um, for the first time or upgrade to pro, flipping hippos will get you 30% off. Go be productive. Go create some really good routines and processes so that you can be successful um, in 23. Thanks for watching. Bye.